frunk. Okay, activate the frunk. That is freaking awesome. Good everything and welcome back to Tesla's Vile. Today I'm pretty darn excited. I have a very cool Tesla Model 3 product review and install for all of you. So today we have an auto open and auto close trunk and frunk system from a new company called Hancho. They reached out to me to do a product review and install for these two things and I was like, hell yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. These are really cool products. Without further ado, if this sounds interesting to you, let's get right, right into it. Alright, so the first thing that I'm noticing is this is very well packaged. So you open the box up, you do have this warranty card which is right here. So you immediately see how nicely this is packaged. These are the power struts, I believe, right here. Uh, they are right on top, front and center. So if we pull out this foam. Then we have the remainder of the hardware, which is a bunch of wiring, uh, some sort of... Wow. This is going to be pretty involved from what I can tell, but we're going to find out here. This is some sort of actuator with a pulley or a thing right there. Very interesting. Okay, so we're going to try and parse through all this stuff and get ready to install. So, very first step, we are in the frunk right now. We're going to do the frunk first. So we have to remove basically all of this trim in here. So every single piece is just held on by a variety of clips. First of all, we're going to take this guy off. You can just pop it right off. I pulled it off a little bit, but as you can see, there's some white little clips right here that just will pop off if you put enough force on them. Um, you won't break anything, at least as far as I can tell, and then it just lifts off just like that. Next up, you need to remove this AC or this uh, HVAC system right here. It's just more white clips, as you can see. So you should be able to just pull up on these guys and pop them out and do the same all around, and that will lift right on out. The next step is removing this entire black piece right here. Right, so, so there are seven bolts you need to remove in here in order to remove this black trim. So you have two right here, which are underneath the button pressing. You can just pop that out and unplug the button. There's two right here, two inside of the bag clips, and the seventh one is up near the windshield washer fluid reservoir. So these are 10 millimeter bolts. So we now have all seven of the bolts removed. Let's get on to removing these. So these are secured mainly by more clips, but they're a little bit different. So I like to start up in the corners here and just pull up on each little piece and you'll start to hear them release. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's basically a plastic piece that goes down inside of another one and it's just a pressure fit. So just work your way down and they will start working their way out. All right, so now we have it fully released. So at this point, it is just a matter of lifting it out and making sure that it clears everything in the path. This is a good way to reduce weight for racing, that's for sure. All right, so now, as you can see, this is a pretty cool view. We have a view of the inside of this front end here. We can see the motor and all sorts of fun components in here. From here, it's all about wiring. So I have already installed this. One of the things that was hard is the wiring diagram is not very helpful. However, uh, now that I have it installed, I have a pretty good idea of where everything should right, go. So first off, installing the struts. This is no different than the other install video I did. I will make sure to card this across the top of the video. So these have uh, little O-rings that you can pop out with a flathead screwdriver, which opens up the ball joint and you can either pop them off and then putting them on, you do not need to use this O-ring. It can just force over the ball joint. So both of these are that exact same install and they both have these pretty heavy duty power cables coming off of them. So this one I just routed up and behind this HVAC system here and over the battery. All right, so now that I have all of this out, I'm able to move on to the suction lock or I guess tension lock here. So this is a pretty interesting thing. There is a bolt in the regular locking mechanism that just goes right in here. It's another 11 millimeter bolt. You pull that out. Now with this piece, you are able to Turn it 90 degrees and there's a little piece right down here that you can slide this edge that is kind of like 90 degree angle, couple pieces put together, 
So you're able to put that in right down there and then rotate this 90 degrees and it will line up right in place here. Then we can pop the screw right in. All right, now that that is sufficiently tight, I believe we're able to just pop this on here, maybe. Okay, so it turns out I had this backwards. Basically, I had it flipped this way, but we want it flipped the other direction and put on the exact same spot. Okay, now they've provided us with some springs that we're gonna throw on back to this original mounting point where the easy open spring thing was. that they give you is a controller so the controller is this box right here i have it secured with double-sided tape onto this basically uh, sway bar looking thing inside of the engine bay or the i guess motor bay inside of here so this is just basically set up for everything to plug into so we do have the power cord from the other strut we have this cord from this strut those two just plug right into these blue pieces right on the back here Next, we have a cable that is pretty complicated and it has to do with all of this system up here. So I have all of these all kind of bundled up. I still need to secure them. However, the next thing that we have is the grounding system right here. So this is just a ground cable and you, I secured it to this bolt right on the frame over here, as you can see. So it's just secured right to that. The next thing we have is a power cable, which just secures right onto the positive terminal of the battery. Just unscrew this guy. It's got a nice little thing that you can put underneath the bolt and secure there. This is the fuse. What we have here is a beeper or a buzzer, and it is absurdly annoying. So I've actually unplugged it. However, it's kind of essential for changing the different settings. So this thing has, I think, six different speed settings for opening and closing, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, the slowest setting is very, very slow. So you're definitely going to want to have this thing plugged in at least enough to be able to change those settings. We have the original push button emergency release inside the vehicle. This is what is inside of here and plugs directly into this guy. So you're going to pop it out of there and they give you a harness that can actually, it's actually a direct fit, but it has two cables coming off of it. So it has its own replacement, which is one to one to this emergency release plug and then it has this guy which attaches into here so this cable has two other plugs so down inside right underneath here there is a motor so this motor is attached to this metal uh, pull string which ends up pulling this guy backwards so you're basically overriding this with their plug again there is another one-to-one -one fit so you plug the hand show system into the motor and then you plug the old motor plug into the hand show system here. The same thing applies over here. This is the original sensor to tell this cable to move over on this side. So you're able to unplug it from this harness and then Han show provides you a two double-sided uh, retrofit that basically this is their version and you can plug the old version into here. So you're basically overriding the normal system. Now, the most janky part about this is their motor, which controls this cable right here. This is the motor for that. They don't give you a really good way to mount that. So the best way to do it is to use their double-sided, their provided double-sided tape and mount it as far under here as you possibly can. So you can see that I have the regular line that runs right here, which attaches to this guy. So there is a spring right here, which we've seen. This is the easy open and easy close spring that I've done in a previous video. This is a piece that is their retrofit. These instructions are very good. So this whole system is pretty simple to install, except for the wiring. The wiring is the most difficult part. And as you'll see, I actually have a single unused plug right here, which is pretty unfortunate. If you look in the controller, there's actually an open plug right here, but this does not fit in there. So I'm not really sure where this needs to go. It is not inherent in the directions. So uh, the directions are not super helpful for the wiring. I just kind of had to stumble through this and I ran out of light and I was not able to film this part. So the last thing that I need to do is basically just kind of secure these things wherever I possibly can so that they're out of the way and are not subjected to wire. All right, now the final thing that I want to go over is how to adjust the speed. Because as I said, when you first turn it on, it is cryptically slow. It is so slow and it's very kind of concerning, but it does have 
six different settings. So I currently have it on the fourth, but I do wanna go a little bit faster. So in order to reset it, you need to plug this guy in, which is just a simple insert. This button will now be active, so you need to press and hold it, and you're gonna see why I'm unplugging this buzzer. It's highly, highly annoying. But you press and hold, and you'll hear it beep, and then after that, you'll hear a number of beeps. Beep. One, two, one, two, three. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it on the fifth setting. So once you hear the number of beeps that you wanna keep it on, let go of the button, and it is now in that setting. So now what we need to do is we need to put everything back together. So I'm gonna tape a bunch of things into place, and then we're gonna put all of the plastic trim back in, and then we're gonna see how it looks when it opens and closes. Frunk. That's done. Activate the frunk. Frunk. That is freaking awesome. All right, so there we have it. We installed the power frunk from Hancho Auto. So this was super cool. It was a pretty tough install. I'm not gonna lie, it was actually rather difficult. For all of the things that I've done on this channel, this was definitely the most difficult. Everything was pretty easy up until the wiring. The wiring diagram in the instructions is pretty insufficient, so I kind of just had to figure it out on my own and see what plugs looked like they went where and what would fit into what. So it was rather difficult, but in the end it did work out and it works like an absolute champ. Uh, something really cool about this is that it also works with Siri. So you can now use Siri to open and close your frunk. One thing that I don't like about it is you can press the frunk button on the inside to open it, but once it's open, the car still think it's, thinks it's open, so that button is grayed out, since normally you have to shut your, this by hand. So in order to shut it, you have to either use Siri or use your phone to shut it. So that's probably my biggest complaint. If you're technically inclined or you want a challenge, this is definitely a great product. Seems super reliable. Uh, just make sure you do a good job installing it, cleaning up the wiring, uh, getting everything secured and in a good place. Um, it is rather slow, so I would definitely recommend speeding it up. I usually have it at a setting of five or six. Six is the fastest, five is almost there. Either way, you're gonna probably be more happy with that than when it's lower because that's super slow. Anyways, like I said, 21.3% discount if you use the discount code Tesla's Wild one Links and discount codes are in the description below. Make sure you stay tuned because I actually have an auto trunk video coming soon by the same company, uh, and you can get an even better deal if you buy both of these products together. I know they are expensive, but it is definitely worthwhile. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash that like and subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I have a lot of new content coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned, and we'll see you guys next video.